It has been 10 years since the Skylanders series debuted, and that statement alone amazes me. This series has been out for a decade. That is more than half of my life that this game has been out. And even though I took a several year hiatus of playing each Skylanders game, it made a huge return to my life. So I figured why not play the game that started it all again, 10 years later. This video will basically be a look back through the first Skylanders game, giving its 10th birthday just a small tribute for myself to this amazing game. Wait, hold up. Just for the record, spoilers for the lore of this game if you care. Okay, bye. Wowzers, look at all these balloons leaving. Parking's gonna be a snap. They're not just leaving, they're evacuating. Something is terribly wrong. Oh, well that explains the flying rocks. Are you sure this is a good idea? Just go on, Flynn. Get to higher ground. I'll meet you on the other side of town. Alrighty-o. Good luck, Hugo. The game starts out in pure chaos as an entire town is being ripped to pieces by a tornado. You meet Hugo and Flynn who become crucial characters throughout the entire series, and you escape the tornado and save the village only to find out that there have been reports all around Skylands just like this. After the first level is where you go to the ruins, the main hub, and let me just say, the ruins is great. We learn that the core of light has been destroyed and we need to rebuild it in order to defeat Chaos, who is attempting to spread darkness. The first of eight distinct chapters in my mind has just started. We rescue Callie in the next level, who offers us challenges so you can upgrade your Skylanders. We also learn that the Eternal Air Source is the first of eight Eternal Sources we have to get, and we need a strong propeller in order to get us to it. So, we go to Sky Schooner Docks and defeat a few Dro, meet Persephone, and grab the propeller. Easy. Next, we head to the Stormy Stronghold, and what do you know, the air source is right there waiting for us, so I guess we'll just take it. Seven more to go. The second chapter of this game takes us to the docks of the hub world, where we meet Gurgolfin. He is a gilman whose home has been turned into an oil refinery. He agrees to help us if we save his town, so we go to Oil Spill Island and destroy the oil refinery. Hugo also lets us know that the eternal water source cannot be processed in the core unless we get the t twin sprouts of Ocean Major Minor. Tongue twister, right? So, we head to one of my personal favorite levels, Dark Water Cove, and fight pirates for it. We also steal their ship because they gunned our old one down. Rumor has it a big fish in the Leviathan Lagoon has been surfacing. So, instead of backing away from the rumors, we decide to run right at it. And what do you know, there's a giant fish chilling which can definitely eat us in, in the Leviathan Lagoon. But the Lagoon is a super chill level up until the end, where you find the water source and you go to grab it, and boom, the fish it eats us, and we get taken into its stomach, where somehow Chaos is waiting for us. He summons water minions, and we take them down, and we take the eternal water source. The beach takes us to the third chapter of the game, where we meet Diggs, possibly the most annoying NPC in the game, who takes us to the Crystal Eye Castle, where we collect the Crystal Eye for the Core of Light. Because, on top of the Eternal Sources, we apparently need other nameless components. But, the Cyclopses don't care that we took the Crystal Eye, do they? Oh wait, yes they do. Anyway, we go to the castle and destroy a few of their buildings, and by a few I mean we ransack the entire place in order to get this stupid thing, and we're good. The people of Stonetown have also been keeping the Eternal Earth Source safe for us the entire time, which is great news, 
Except when we arrive, the Earth source is turned into a giant monster, which we handily defeat, and we leave Stonetown with the third eternal source. After we return to the ruins, cre a creature sprouts from the ground. Arbo, who is the son of Barbo and the child of Larbo, so on and so forth, is born again because of our retrieval of the earth, water, and air sources. And he knows where the fourth source is, which is the life source. This begins the fourth chapter of the game. He takes us up to the treetop terrace, where we receive the life siege, which point us in the way of the eternal source. Meanwhile, Chaos learns the life source is hiding a giant egg corn, and gets the trolls to cut down every tree until they find it. We return to the treetop terrace, which is now turned into a for falling forest infested with trolls and machinery. We make our way to the life source, confront Chaos again, and take down his baddies and f four sources to go. Quick break to talk about my experience so far with this game. So far, this game is exactly how I left it. It is so magical going from land to land and doing different things to further the story. Even though it is only available in 720p, that isn't a huge problem as the quality of the game is on point. If you've never played any Skylanders game, check it out because you don't want to miss it. Anyway, even though the story feels fairly linear, it never gets boring at any point, and every level is a new exciting adventure we've never seen before. Playing them for the first time in a decent while was great, and felt so much more fun because of the looming 10th anniversary. Anyway, back to the story. We start the 5th chapter of the game where we meet General Robot, who informs us that we need a specific golden gear for the Core of Light. We go to the Troll Warehouse where we meet Snuckles and the rest of the Mabu Defense Force, and we put together the pieces of a map to make our way through the minefield to the gear. General Robot informs us that in order to obtain the tech source, it uses a green goo, which is at a factory that trolls have taken over. So, we shoot off to the goo factory and we find many trolls. We then use a mega bomb to explode our way through and obtain the goo. We are then taken to the battlefield, where it's Mabu versus trolls. The battle is tough, and at the end, it is revealed that the trolls are using a tech source to power their tank. So, we destroy the tank and we obtain the te eternal tech source. The darkness has been spreading, and even though the ruins is now dark, we still go down to investigate the noises on the beach. We find T-Bone, who kicks into gear the sixth chapter of the game. T-Bone is a skeleton, and we help him retrieve the parts of his body, and after we do this, he takes us to the underworld in return for helping him. The core needs another component, a skull mask. We learn that the crawling catacombs has one, so T-Bone abandons us there, and we are left to fend for our own in the dark. We are able to kill all of the skeletons and find the skull mask, and the eternal undead source is in the creepy citadel. But, the only way to get to the creepy citadel is with a skeleton key. The only problem is that zombies have taken the key for themselves and are hiding it in the cadaverous crypt. The zombies prove to be hard enemies if you don't have a fire skylander, but we make, it, make our way through and head out for the creepy citadel. T-Bone uses the skeleton key and lets us into the citadel. Many knights and other baddies try and stomp us down, but once we make our way to, to the under, eternal undead source, Chaos pops up again and uses the undead source and his minions to try and stop us from obtaining the source. But we defeat him and we get the eternal undead source. Afterwards, Diggs the Mulkin from earlier randomly finds a train, but Mulkin miners have been trapped in a cave trying to find the Crucible of the Ages. This just so happens to be another component of the Core of Light, so we agree to help the miners get free, and we obtain the Crucible. The seventh chapter, the Fire Source, is already underway, and we make our way back through the Mulkin Mine to the Lava Lakes Railway, which has been torn up by Glumshanks. And we make our way past the Guardians and Extreme Heat to the Fire Source. Chaos is back, and with the same minions and spells, we make quick work of him. The strange statue out in the water has started to move, so of course we investigate it. This is where the 8th and final chapter of the game begins. The Archean Weapon Master is revealed to be the statue, and he has access to the Lost Archean Vaults. We also need Quicksilver to power the core, so we head to the Quicksilver Vault and meet many unfriendly Archeans. After we obtain the Quicksilver, only one component is stopping us from completing the core, the Magic Source. 
we have to go to the Archean Armory. Turn on the lights to reveal hundreds of giant Archeans, and we can tra we take control of one of them. Stomp through the entire level, fight another Archean, and make our way to the magic source. With this being brought to the core, it is complete, and total darkness has been changed to a bright beacon, and the core of light has been completed. With Chaos now losing his darkness, he retreats to the Outlands, where we use the core of light to track him and bring us to his lair. Chaos's lair is a very difficult level with many foes who block our path, but once we make it to his castle, it is a battle versus Chaos. He brings out all of his minions from earlier, plus one more, the monster who killed Eon, destroyed the core of light, and is basically responsible for the entire game happening. The four-headed elemental hydra. Luckily, we have to defeat Chaos and this hydra also goes down. Speaking of which, time for a destroying Chaos in the final fight montage. We've heard enough out of you. Finally, something we agree on. You know, you're okay when you're not putting your foot in your mouth. Back at you. Okay, seriously, I'm gonna barf now. Eon? I know you're here somewhere. You and your apprentice portal master. Go ahead, send me back to the Outlands. It won't do any good. I'll just <laughs> keep coming back again and again and again. Until Skyland is mine! Actually, Chaos, you're not going to the Outlands this time. Uh, what? I have something more fitting in mind for you. Hugo, would you please? Me? Oh, thank you, Master Eon. You're gonna love this. <laughs> we made a few upgrades. Okay, look, let me go and we'll split this place. 70 30. What do you say? Okay, how about 60 40? 50 50? Okay! Uh oh. You haven't seen the last of me! <laughs> Wowzers, now that's fast! With Chaos defeated, we send him to Earth, and Skylands is saved. Wait, 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 not quite yet. We still do have four levels. The post-game of Skylander Spire's adventure basically consists of four adventure packs, which you can buy separately. They all are just one-off adventures where you have a mission and you basically have to achieve it. Um, the Empire of Ice is basically a snow level where you have to defeat ice ogres and destroy this giant wall that they built, which is keeping out summertime. The Pirate Seas is one long game of matching and nothing really changes in the end except, oh wow, we freed the town. I mean, there wasn't a lot wrong in the first place here, but some people seem to like this level. The Darklight Crypt is probably the most lore-based adventure pack, showing this giant eyeball who took control of ghosts and basically turned the ghosts evil, and we kill the eye and everything reverts back to normal. And finally, Dragon's Peak, the best level in all of Skylanders. In my opinion, it is an homage to Spyro, like the original games, where Flavius tries to save King Ramses and defeat Bathic, which if you've ever played or know the lore of Spyro, uh, I think it's crucial for this level. I've never played Spyro, but I still do enjoy it. 
All in all, Skylanders is a great series, and I'm honestly shocked that it has been 10 years since it came out, because this game is so pristine. I hope that everybody had a great 10th anniversary of Skylanders, because I know that I did. And if you've enjoyed this retrospective video on the first Skylanders game, comment suggestions for other videos, and I will do whatever you guys want. But if you have never played the Skylanders games, I cannot emphasize enough to all of you to go and start by playing this one. Just, just please play the, play the game, play the game.